Hi, this is Lance Culver, and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. The idea for this video comes from a viewer who asked if tie flow could recreate this effect. I immediately thought of the tie flow sample scene Phys X recombine, but in that example, the object is stuck on the ground and this one is moving, so I thought of a different way of doing it, and I thought it would be a good lesson for a new user. I just have a model of a cup here, but anything could be used. I'm going to go ahead and create a box here. I'm going to go over creating tie flow. And open the editor. I'm also going to go ahead and enable simulation groups one and two. So I'm going to birth objects and select the object. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. And move this out of here. I'm going to drop in a Voronoi fracture. I'm going to give it 350 points. I'm going to use a physics shape and a physics bind. I'm going to change the bind type to joint and disable the swing and twist. I'm also going to put the binds on group one. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a particle groups and enable group one. I'm gonna drop in a time test. And I'll say if it's 30 frames with a variation of zero. And I'm gonna drop a force operator into a new event. And connect that to the time test. Okay, I'm just going to give a little animation to the force. Okay, I'm going to add a slow operator. Increase that to maybe try seven. I'm going to just go ahead and display dots. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drop a spawn operator just beneath the fracture. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a particle groups into a new event. I'm going to place that on group two. I'm going to change this color. We'll add a physics shape and a physics switch and a surface test. We'll go ahead and animate that box. I'm going to add it to my surface test and do a test type of volume inside. And if the test is true, we're going to be sent to a new event here where I'm going to use a physics switch to activate the particles and then we're going to use a time test with a value of 150 frames with a 90 frame variation and I'm going to use a find target in a new event and connect that to the time test and then I'm going to use control by velocity I'm going to test true if distance is less than 25 with a 10% variation. I control by velocity. I'm going to increase this to 25. And I'm also going to give it a 10% ease. And down under target location, for point, I'm going to select particle target. And for the channel, I'm going to use target. And for target alignment, I will use particle target. And I will decrease the distance to 1.5. And I will decrease interpolation to 0.85. And before I get going too far, I should use a set target operator. And for target, I will choose parent. I'll connect this event to the spawn. Okay, now I will drop a move to target into a new event. And we'll connect that to the fine target. Here we'll give an interpolation of 0.25. And maybe give it a 
20% variation. And we'll change the timing to continuous. Also I'm going to drop in a rotation. I'm gonna change it to align to neighbors. Enable group one. I'm gonna go ahead and increase this radius. And I'm going to lower the interpolation down to 0.2. And I will change the timing to continuous. Next, I will drop in a link to target. I will enable effect velocity, and I will change the timing to continuous. So if I scrub through this, all right, I might increase this acceleration a little bit. Okay, before finishing up, I need to, under the spawn operator, I meant to change the timing to on event entry. So it only creates the, the single child particle. And just to add a little randomness to this, I'm going to add a spin operator into this event here, the event that drives the animation for the parent particles. And I'm gonna change the spin axis to inherent previous probably reduce the spin rate to about 75 and I'm going to change the timing to continuous. Okay, so just to briefly go over what I've done for those of you who might be new to tie flow. In this main event here, I birthed the particle of the cup and applied a Voronoi fracture which created created all these individual particles. I then applied a physx shape and a physx bind to hold those particles together and I used a time test before I would create the animation with a force operator. Now in using the spawn operator we create one particle of each of the parent particles and then they are sent into this event where I used a set target operator and assigned the parent as the target and I placed these particles on simulation group 2, made them physx shapes and then deactivated them with a physics switch. The activator box sends them into this event where they're reactivated. The particles fall and rest on the ground for anywhere between 60 and 240 frames. Then they are sent into this event where there's a fine target with a target location of particle target. And I control the speed of their movement by velocity. I increase the test true distance to prevent a particle that's supposed to land on this side from getting trapped. If it gets to here, it's automatically sent into this event where first I used a move to target with a lowered interpolation to prevent the particles from snapping into place. And the same thing with the rotation. I lowered the interpolation to help slow that movement, that transition down. And I used the rotation orientation as a line to neighbors and with the neighbors being those that are on simulation group one, which are the parent particles. And then lastly, I used a link to target and I set each of these on a timing of continuous so it happened frame by frame. And that keeps the particles locked in place for the duration of the animation. Anyway, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. As always, if there was any part of it that you didn't understand or you're having trouble with, feel free to drop a comment below. I hope you have a great day, and until next time, thanks again. See you.